entonces So, hello, thank you for coming one more time. My name is Blackson. This is Hydrum, DJ, producer, and my best friend. Today's video is going to be about four things that are good about Spanish and four things that are bad about Spanish. Stay tuned. So, hello, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming one more time. You already know me, my name is Blacksung. On the camera, we have high drum today that is basically not recording, but he is working as basically the stabilizer, stabilizer, stabilizer. I don't know how to pronounce the word. Stabilizer. So, yeah, today we're going to speak about good things and bad things of learning Spanish. So, let's dive right into the good things. First of all, so number one is the letter Ñ. It is represented on the International Phonetic Alphabet as a voiced palatal nasal, the symbol that you can see over here. And it sounds like when you put a G and an N together in Italian, like lasagna, like lavagna, like compagni, all those words. And yeah, I'm learning Italian as I think I said on a previous video. I don't know if I said it. And it is useful in everyday conversation because some of the common words that you will use in Spanish pretty much every day will be, for example, año, that is a year, niño, that is a kid, that guy passing over there. Number two is exclamation and question marks or points, however you want to call it, depending on where are you from, if you speak English. In English, for example, exclamation marks or question marks are only one, the closing one, but sometimes you don't have a clear start on a question or exclamation sentence. In Spanish, even though we don't use them all the time as native speakers and writers, technically the correct way to use them is to use the opening one and the closing one and those are pretty useful symbols in Spanish because you can really know where does a question start and where does a question end and you can translate the questions depending on the intonation you can use commas you can use separated questions and write them all in one line what are you doing <laughs> Number three is diacritics. Diacritics are all those symbols that we have that help us distinguishing between sounds and between accents. For example, we have only one accent, the acute one, that is this. And in Spanish, we usually call it tilde, that is actually another symbol, that is this one that you will use for the ñ. And most of the time, if it helps in something, we use a macron instead of a tilde. But yeah, we only have one, and it always marks the accent on a word and it goes only on top of vowels. Well, as I said, we only have the acute one. Some examples are plástico, that is plastic, and it has the accent on the A. Fonética, that is phonetics, and it has the accent on the letter E. Sandía, that is a watermelon, and it has the accent on the letter I. León, that is a lion, and it has the accent on the letter O. And finally, brújula, that is a compass, and it has the accent on the letter U. So, A, I, E, O, U, all five use different accents. Uh, well, I mean, no, I, I said something so stupid. They all use accents, and even though in a lot of cases they don't change the meaning of the words, they change the intonation. So when you're learning Spanish, they will be pretty useful if they are written on a word. Also, it is helpful that we only have the acute one, that you can only use one accent per word, and that you have specific rules with just a few exceptions to those rules that are applied sometimes. At some point, you will write a lot and read a lot, and you will get used to write those accents. And number four is the phonetically consistent vowels. For example, in English you have A as in apple, A as in dad, or A as in bad. So you have three different sounds. In Spanish you have A as in arbol, A as in mama, A as in papa. You only have one A, one letter A. So A is always A, E is always E, I is always E, O is always O, and U is always U. And even though you have an accent on those, that will change where the accent goes, not the pronunciation of the letter. So that's pretty useful when you're learning Spanish. Learning which are those sounds and how to use them. And of course, we have the bad things, and those things are hell a lot of times, but not really if you get used to English, to Spanish. Oh, 
In English, you have the verb have that is in Spanish tener, and you have only four different tenses have, has, had, and having. You have no more than those. Let's put another example, but in Spanish. In Spanish, you have haber. Haber is an auxiliary, actually. Uh, it can be used as a verb, but the fact is that, for example, haber is the infinitive form. In Spanish, we have haber, but also he, as, a, hemos, habéis, han, he habido, ha sabido, habíamos sabido, habíais sabido, había habido, hubimos sabido, hubimos, hubieron, Hubiesen. You get the point, right? So it is really useful to have only some tenses in English. That's something I have to admit that was uh, one of the easiest parts to learn in English because you can use pretty much the same conjugation for all the verbs. Number two are word strings. Even though in English you can speak really fast, Spanish is actually one of the fastest languages in the world, only behind Japanese. That is, these syllables per second, Spanish is only this. So it is the second fastest language in the world. And we can really make word strings. We can really attach a lot of words together. And even though those will be separate words, those will sound like one single big messy word. Something similar to what happens in German. But in German, you have literally the longest words uh, so this is somebody speaking in Spanish really fast and you will see that holy shit that's difficult Number three are false friends. You know, I hate fake people. You are always talking to them. I they seem to be really nice with you. And when you turn your back to them, they are like stabbing you from the back. And they're such a bunch of... <laughs> no, okay. Let's be real. False friends are those words that sound similar, but have completely different meanings in different languages. Some examples are the following. That's a on this picture. Okay. Put. Porque me cuesta tanto esa parte. Rope and ropa. Rope in Spanish is a string and ropa is clothing. You have embarrassing and embarazada. Embarrassing is embarazoso. That is similar, but it's not the same as embarazada. Embarazada is actually pregnant. Envy and enviar. Envy is envidia. Enviar is to send. American and Americano. And this is a tricky one because it depends on the context. Because you can say somebody's American in English and you can be talking about somebody from the American continent or somebody from the United States. In Spanish, when you talk about something from the US, you speak about an estadounidense because of the name of the country in Spanish, Estados Unidos de America. And when you're speaking about an Americano, you're speaking about somebody, whether from the US, if you you want to see it like that or from the whole continent i can say soy un americano because i live in america the whole continent because america is not a country that's the right part that, that doesn't depend on the context the, you know the country is the, the united states of america not just america you piece of no no okay okay yeah dejo de ser tan latino por un momento lo siento then you have carpet and carpeta carpet correct translation will be alfombra and carpeta is a folder like the folders that you have on windows with those lollies and the onu is coming for you fbi open up fbi open up Then in English you have grocery and in Spanish you have grocería, but those are completely different. When you go to the grocery store, estás yendo a la tienda de alimentos. When in Spanish you say a grocería, you're saying a swear word. Or if you're grocero, you're somebody really, really rude. So you're being really rude in Spanish would be something like, está siendo muy grosero. And the number four are some sounds that will depend on the region and also also will depend directly on the language, in this case Spanish. Some heard sounds for people that speak English natively will be for example the R instead of R, so you don't say arroz, the correct pronunciation is arroz with R. Then you have the LL that for example in Gaelic is but in Spanish it is the same sound as J, as in Jake. You use LL to write llave instead of using Y and also in Spanish you don't use J as a J sound but instead as a H sound as a G 
you know, Spanish is sometimes really messy when you're speaking about consonants, but at least vowels are phonetically consistent. And we also have different accents because, for example, depending on accents, you will pronounce S, C and Z or Z, however you want to call it, differently. For example, if you're Spanish, but in Latin America, S, C and Z can sound the same. For example, in Oceano, Asador y Zanahoria, and they all sound Z, the same sound. I have a lisp and I don't f***ing care. Que se seo, que soy sopetas. <laughs> We also don't really make a difference between B and V. We say vacaciones instead of vacaciones. In other languages, it is really important. In Spanish, not really. And uh, yeah, I think pretty much that'll be it. I was not able to think of a lot of ideas uh, because, you know, I am not a linguist. <laughs> I do what I can. And of course, I am a language nerd. I like languages. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for calling. I was uh, I was going to say thank you for calling. I'm an idiot. Here's Hydrum. If you want to subscribe to Hydrum's channel, it'll be on the description. He's not my brother, even though he looks like he's my best friend. You know your English still sucks, but on yeah. the other hand, you can communicate. My hands is my. My hands are. My hands are. Okay, that he's deaf as f as a wall, uh, so he speaks with his hands. Que está sordo como una tapia por eso habla con las manos. And I know this is a ghetto microphone, but it works, and that's what I care about. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, give it a like, share it with your friends, and uh, as always, have a good night and keep. Dancing! Oh, holy sh! That was hard, you know? That's what she said! <laughs> oh